Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about ophthalmia neonatarum, which is commonly also known as neonatal conjunctivitis. So, what's the definition? So, ophthalmia neonatarum is basically the name that's given to bilateral inflammation of the conjunctiva occurring in an infant less than 30 days, basically occurring in a neonat. It is a preventable disease usually occurring as a result of carelessness at the time of birth. As a matter of fact, any discharge or even watering from the eyes in the first week of life should arouse suspicion of ophthalmia neonatarum as tears are not formed till then. So what is the etiology? So what is the source and mode of infection? So infection may occur in three ways that can be before birth, during birth or after birth. So one, before birth infection is very rare through infected liquor and knee in mothers with ruptured membranes. So sometimes in cases whereby there's premature rupture of membranes or preterm premature rupture of membranes, so that's when they can get infected before birth. Then two, during birth. It is the most common mode of infection from the infected birth canal, especially when the child is born with first presentation or with forceps. Three, after birth. So infection may occur during first birth of newborn or from soil clots or fingers with infected lochia. So what are the causative agents? So we have got chemical conjunctivitis. It is caused by, in all the days, silver nitrate was the common cause of antibiotic use for prophylaxis. Two, gonococcal infection was considered a serious disease in the past as it used to be responsible for 50% of blindness in children. But recently, the decline in the incidence of gonorrhea as well as effective methods of prophylaxis and treatment have almost eliminated it in developed countries. However, in many developing countries, it still continues to be a problem. Three other bacterial infections responsible for ophthalmia neonatarum include Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus hemolyticus, and Streptococcus pneumonia. Four, neonatal, co in neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis caused by serotypes D2K of chlamydia trachomatis is the commonest cause of ophthalmia and neonatarum in developed countries. Five, herpes simplex ophthalmia and neonatarum is a rare condition caused by herpes simplex 2 virus. So clinical features, what is the incubation period? So incubation period varies depending on the type of the causative agent as shown below. So causative agent incubation period. So if it was due to a chemical agent such as we talked about silver nitrate, so the incubation period would be six hours. Gonococcal, that would be four days. Other bacterial infections, it would be five days. Neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis, which is commonly due to chlamydia trachomatis, that takes 21 days. And herpes simplex, 15 days. So what are the signs and symptoms? So there's pain and tenderness in the eyeball. To a conjunctival discharge, it is purulent in gonococcal ophthalmia neonatarum and mucoid or mucopurulent in other bacterial cases and neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis. Three, lips are usually swollen in infective cases. Eyelids and periocular vesicles may occur in HSV infection. Four, conjunctiva may show hyperemia and chemosis. So basically, what is chemosis? That basically refers to edema, okay? There might be mild papillary response in neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis and herpes simplex ophthalmia neonatarum. Five, corneal involvement. Though it's rare, it may occur in the form of superficial punctate keratitis, especially in herpes simplex ophthalmia neonatarum. So this is basically a diagram that's showing conjunctival discharge, yeah, and yeah. And then I don't know if you're able to notice there's also eyelid swelling here. So what are the complications of ophthalmia neonatarum? Untreated cases, especially of gonococcal ophthalmia neonatarum, may develop corneal ulceration, which may perforate rapidly, resulting in corneal opacification or staphyloma formation. Treatment. So one thing you need to know is that prophylactic, prophylactic treatment is always better than curative. So prophylaxis needs antenatal, natal, and postnatal care. So antenatal measures include thorough care of mother and treatment of genital infections when suspected. 
to natal measures are of utmost importance as muscle infection occurs during childbirth. So delivery should be conducted under hygienic conditions, taking all aseptic measures. The newborn baby's clothes lids should be thoroughly cleansed and dried. Three postnatal measures include sodium povidone iodine 2.5% solution is effective against the common pathogens. Use of either 1% tetracycline ointment or 0.5% erythromycin ointment into the eyes of the babies immediately after birth are useful for preventing bacterial and chlamydial ophthalmia neonatarum. Then, single injection of ceftriaxone 50 mg per kg IM or IV and you should not exceed 125 mg. It should be given to infants born to mothers with untreated gonococcal infection. So, in the past, 1% silver nitrate solution was put in the eyes of babies immediately after birth, which we used to call the Crits method. However, the reason it's mentioned here is just for historical value. We do not do that anymore. So, be curative treatment. So, we're talking about prophylactic treatment here. Now, we go to curative treatment. So, as a rule, conjectival cytology samples and culture sensitivity swaps should be taken before starting the treatment. 1. Chemical ophthalmia neonatarum is a self-limiting condition and it does not require any treatment. 2. Gonococcal ophthalmia neonatarum, it needs proper treatment to prevent complications. So, topical therapy should include 1. Saline lavage hourly till the discharge is eliminated. 2. Bacitracin eye ointment 4 times a day. Because of resistant streams, topical penicillin therapy is not reliable. However, in cases with proof penicillin susceptibility, penicillin drops 5,000 to 10,000 units per mil should be instilled every minute for half an hour. Every 5 minutes for next half an hour and then half hourly till the infection is controlled. If cornea is involved, then atropine sulfate ointment should be applied. Be systemic therapy. Neonates with gonococcal ophthalmia should be treated for 7 days with one of the following regimens. So, ceftriaxone, which is 75 to 100 mg per kg per day, IV or IMQID, or you can use cefotaxime, 100 to 150 mg per kg per day, IV or IM, 12 hourly, or ciprofloxacin, 10 to 20 mg per kg per day, or nofloxacin, 10 mg per kg per day, or if the gonococcal isolate is proved to be susceptible to penicillin, crystalline benzyl penicillin G, 50,000 units to full term. Normal weight babies and 20,000 units to premature or low weight babies should be given intramuscularly twice daily for three days. Then three, other bacterial ophthalmia neonatarum should be treated for two weeks by both broad spectrum antibiotic drops and ointments such as neomycin, bacitracin, or tobramycin. Four, neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis it responds well to topical tetracycline 1% or erythromycin 0.5% eye ointment QID for 3 weeks however systemic erythromycin which is 125 mg orally QID for 3 weeks should also be given since the presence of chlamydia agents in the conjunctiva implies colonization of upper respiratory tract as well both parents should also be treated with systemic erythromycin. Then herpes simplex conjunctivitis is usually a self-remitting disease. However, topical antiviral drugs control the infection more effectively and may pre prevent the recurrence. High-dose intravenous acyclovir is indicated in cases of, suspected of systemic herpes infection. So basically, let's just quickly revise. So under prophylactic measures, so we said the antenatal measures, right? So basically treat any genital infection when you suspect them to natal measures. So basically delivery should be conducted under hygienic conditions. Then postnatal measures include you can give profit on iodine or 1% tetracycline ointment or 0.5% erythromycin ointment. Then you can give an injection of ceftriaxone, that is if the mother has untreated gonococcal infection. Then under curative treatment with a chemical ophthalmia neonatarum is self-limiting. Then gonococcal ophthalmia neonatarum, you can give things saline, lavage, or bacitrus in eye ointment. And then if cornea is involved, you can give atropine sulfate ointment. 
Then under systemic therapy, we said with gonococcal ophthalmia, you can give ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, or ciprofloxacin. Then if it's any other bacteria, it should be treated for two weeks by a broad-spectrum antibiotic drop. Then if it's neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis, you can give topical tetracycline or erythromycin. And if it's herpes simplex conjunctivitis, usually it's self-limiting. However, you can give hydros uh, high dose of cyclovir. But that you only give it in cases of systemic herpes infection, okay? So that's all about ophthalmia and neonatal. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.